The universe is a shockingly unlikely place. It's been very precisely adjusted to make our lives possible. Many scientists agree that there must be some significance to this, and we aren't here by chance. So does this point to the reality of a creator God? Is there a deeper story? I find the fine-tuning argument not to be proof, but I do like those who talk about it as a pointer towards a creator God. Um, as uh, I've worked as an astrophysicist, one of the things that struck me is uh, the fine-tuning argument, but not just the fine-tuning argument. It's the fine-tuning argument held together with the intelligibility of the laws of physics, uh, the beauty and simplicity of the laws of physics which underlie the complexity of the universe and the fact that they're intelligible to us. Put that alongside the sense of awe that one gets when one looks both at the vastness of the universe and the, the beauty of the physical laws. Put those arguments together and I think you've got a set of pointers towards a deeper story in the universe. I do personally find this uh, argument from the fine-tuning of the universe to uh, some kind of transcendent creator, designer of the universe, quite a compelling argument. But it would be true to say that I think it's important to view this argument in context. Uh, I don't think you would want to just look at one piece of evidence when trying to uh, weigh up uh, what you think about such a, a big issue. I think that the fine-tuning argument is a very useful pointer to uh, the need to think about the universe as being a divine creation. It's not a proof of it. There is no knockdown proof either that the world is a creation or that it's not a creation. The, these matters are too deep uh, for that sort of thing. But it puts the question of God, if you like, on the agenda. And I myself find uh, the creation view of the universe a more economic and persuasive and attractive explanation of fine-tuning than a multiverse idea would be. I do actually find it persuasive. I think as any form of natural theology, it's limited in what it tells you. I think the best explanation for this fine-tuning is the theistic one, that God did it, as opposed to um, you know, an atheistic view in which you know, there, there is no God, it's a multiverse, whatever. Curiously enough, someone like Richard Dawkins says, no, I believe in a, in, in a multiverse, that will explain it. On the other hand, Richard Dawkins tells you that you should only believe things on the basis of evidence. <laughs> well, there's a massive contradiction there within the thought of Richard Dawkins. But, be that as it may, I, I find the argument uh, persuasive um, and not conclusive, not foolproof. No. Um, argument of this kind will be that, um, and there are the, there are letouts, of course, if you want to be like the you know the multiverse. Uh, the, there are letouts. God doesn't force us to believe in Him. Space scientist Graham Swinnard was a skeptic until he started looking at the evidence from fine tuning. Yeah, I mean this this was not easy for me um, because I spent most of my life, fifty years or so of my life, as an ask agnostic scientist and it um, you know to come up with the notion not it's, it's not a proof that God exists but it, it kind of pointed in that direction very strongly for me it seems all these arguments about fine-tuning currently are a challenge to the the physics community why is it like this and um, I mean at the end of the day I just felt that um, the simplest the simplest argument or the simplest solution to this conundrum was that there was a creator. Our experts all agree that cosmic fine-tuning 
isn't a knockdown proof that God is there, but it is a pointer to God's reality, especially when we take it together with other kinds of evidence. However, even if you give me the greater success in making that argument, it will only give me a rather limited idea of the nature of God. It will show me a God who is, if you like, the architect of the universe, um, a God of great power and so on. But there are many other questions we will want to ask about God, because God care about individual human beings and so on and so on, which won't be answered by that type, type, of, type of argument. So I think, it's, I think it's useful and it's helpful and I think it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a hint of the divine presence, but I, that, that's as far as it goes. And for me as a Christian, the Christian faith is tremendously important as it says that you can only know the author of the story uh, on the basis of the author reveals himself in a way that our finite minds can understand. At the heart of my Christian faith is the conviction and the experience that God has revealed himself as supremely in the life, death and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth. And I know what the deeper story is about because I've seen it in Jesus. I know that there's a creator God and that creator God is a loving God. And then, as I say, natural theology of this or any other kind only gets you so far. What does it say about God? Um, well, not all that much. I mean, I think God has to be pretty powerful and, uh, you know, adjectives to do with majesty and so on might apply to the creator of uh, such a vast universe as we've got. Um, but it doesn't get you to the personal God who reveals himself in Jesus Christ and who uh, actually, most astonishingly of all, becomes one of us, becomes incarnate in Christ, um, lives an, a perfect human life, dies for us and rises again. That story um, is, is, is a different one. For Graham Swinnard, thinking about fine-tuning was the first step along a pathway that led him to an encounter with God. There, there happened to be an Alpha course running at the local church in, in, the, in the autumn. And I'd always resisted the idea of going on one. Uh, my wife is a, a sort of a cradle Christian. She's been a Christian for a long time. And she was always kind of trying to persuade me to go on these courses, but it always seemed out of the question. But anyway, at that time, I seemed to be in the right place. And I went, I decided I would give it a try. And I must admit, I was probably, um, a, you know, a, quite a pain for the people on the tables who were leading the discussions because um, I had a very intellectual approach or Head, head approach to everything rather than a heart approach to everything. Anyway, so at the end of the day, I uh, went on that and I learned about the Christianity and the Christian God. And, uh, and in fact, uh, also as part of this course, I had what you might regard as a spiritual encounter. And, uh, and that was a real eye-opener for me because I had always um, had no... I didn't acknowledge any kind of spiritual dimension to life whatsoever prior to that. So the fine-tuning argument, the intelligibility of the universe, the awe-inspiring nature, the elegance of the physical laws, all of, thing, all of these things are pointers which raise questions for me. Uh, but my knowledge and experience of God comes from the fact that I believe that God is a revealing God and that revelation comes in Jesus. Jesus.